I wanted to talk about, uh, kind of titled the message, just, just start, just, just get started. And, um, you know, Pastor Paul talks a lot about, and it always encourages me and, and wakes me up to, um, get that dream off the shelf, right? Um, so if there's something you've been believing God for and you just kind of lay it dormant and you're like, okay, okay, no, we're back. Let's get started. It's pretty, you know, um, I, uh, I did Bible school when I was first out of uh, high school. So I've, you know, graduated from Bible school. And that taught me a lot about how to read the word and how to get into and whatever. And that's fantastic. Um, but it is precept upon precept, line upon line, year after year, day by day, right? And so um, it's just something we always have to be in and always seeking because the world is always vying for our attention and our affection are in our emotion and our money and our time and our everything, right? So we just have to be wise and keep at what, what God's called us to do. So we can go to Mark 4 and 30. Says the parable of the mustard seed. Then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. Now, um, a good friend of mine, Lisa, you guys know her, gave me this necklace about a year ago. And if you see it, there's a tiny, tiny little seed in it and it's a mustard seed. And now this necklace, sometimes like this, has been in some pretty big meetings. And I, it's so cool, right? Because you're like, okay. I'm, I'm putting on the Holy Spirit every day, right? God, you're with me. I'm walking in this. I'm going to be successful in what you've called me to be doing, um, who we're encountering. And God, thank God, he is giving us all more and more opportunities. Would you not agree to run into people you haven't seen in a long time? Or, you know, you just, you get to chat with somebody and, and it just goes deeper. And so it's awesome. But anyways, yeah, so this necklace has always encouraged me. And um, I um, just go back to uh, this verse here. It says, um, but when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater <laughs> <laughs> this little seed greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. That is a big tree. That is a big deal, right? I, I just, uh, that really spoke to me. So in the same way, um, uh, those of you who know me as well, or have seen pictures on Instagram, start a new little hobby, sourdough baking. So um, James, you know, we're always trying to improve our health and, um, James works, um, you know, he can be any place at any time during the day. And so he has to make lunches, kind of getting bored of things. And, um, also things just not feeling great or whatever. So talk about like a divine connection. Friends in high school were posting about doing this, this class, sourdough class. Does anyone want to learn? And I l genuinely wanted to learn. I was like, I want to do that. But then also getting together with people from high school, <laughs> It was funny, right? Because they're like some of them. <laughs> I, did, I wasn't always in their circle. I knew them and some of them. And I was like, oh yeah, you guys are into sourdough now. <laughs> it's a different herb and seed than you used to be into. So I just like, that was really funny to me. And, uh, you know, because we all, you know, we grow up, we have families, you know, anyway. So, um, so I started doing that. And and the thing is, like, I'm explaining it to people. You know, when you start a new hobby, everyone asks you so many questions. You're like, I don't really know how to do this yet. <laughs> I just like it. And it's sort of working and whatever, right? But we're learning a lot with it. It's really cool. But literally, when you start it, you take out all this good um, bacteria and either make bread or discard it. Put it in the fridge, make pizza, do something else with it later. You're left with hardly anything in the jar. And you're like that's not going to make anything. Like, how is that going to make anything? Like, I should have brought a jar tonight. I did take it to Moncton when I went on a business trip two weeks ago and did my, my processes, so I didn't let it die. <laughs> anyways, Shelly knows. So anyways, I um, had a little cup holder. Um, and James was concerned. He was like, well, what are you going to do with virtue? Because that's what I named her. And uh, <laughs> he's like, am I going to get bread? Like, how, well, you're going away for two days. What's happening with the bread? <laughs> I'm sure he was missing me too, but it was very much about the bread. 
So anyways, yeah, you literally, you have nothing. And then you add some really good quality flour and you add water back in. You give it some time. This all preaches, eh? And it grows. And it turns into something magnificent. Now you need to know how to, you know, <laughs> make all that magnificent lean things happen to it. Um, I found out our home is very warm. If you've been in our home, you can attest to that, which is a blessing. However, with bread rising and, and falling, it needs to be temperature controlled, right? So anyways, um, but yeah, so it's just a process, right? Um, I just wrote down, starting with a seed of hope, we just can take a talent, a dollar, a conversation, a bit of faith. You know, I've been walking this walk for a long time and there's been times in my life where I only had a little bit of faith towards something, to be honest, right? Because we all go through things and the enemy is out for us, right? And um, when there's an area of your life that um, can be a surprise or a painful point or whatever, that's where the enemy is going to go, right? And so we have to be wise to that. Um, but yeah, so I just, um, sometimes you have to, just start with that little bit of faith. And basically it's a, I'm just not giving up. That's just, that's just not an option. Right. Um, but that's sometimes where you have to start and that's okay. Cause remember the bread with the little bit of nothing on the bottom of the jar, it, it rises. Right. And, um, then make, make sure we need to make sure what, uh, everything in our life gets what it needs. So, you know, the bread, the water, the flour, um, listening, hearing God for the next step the right circumstances for growth, right? And um, that's where I wrote down fellowship. So I'm going to go to the passion. Luke. I'm not used to the passion sometimes because it's so small, like the 8, 11. When they arrived at the house, Jesus allowed only Peter, John, and Jacob, along with the children's parents to go inside. Jesus told to make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th those left outside who were sobbing and willing, wailing with grief, stop crying. She is not dead. She is just asleep and must be awakened. They laughed at him. No, I'm not in the right. Something's not lining up here. Yeah. Okay. I even have my marker in the right place. That's so weird. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Here. Here, then, is the deep meaning of, to my parable. The word of God is a seed that is sown into hearts. The hard path represents the hand, the hard hearts of men who hear the word of God, but the slanderer quickly snatches away what was sown in their hearts to keep them from believing and experiencing salvation. God, we just pray for hearts right now to be softened and to not be discouraged. The seed falling on the gravel represents those who initially responded to the word with joy, but soon afterward, when a season of harassment of the enemy and difficulty come to them, they wither and fall away, for they have no root in the truth and their faith is temporary. That's why it's important. We are a good church body that we see people, new people especially, right? And just check in with them. How are you doing? What's going on? You know, um, because it's, it's easy to fall away, right? The seed that falls into the weeds represents the hearts of those who hear the word of God, but their growth is quickly choked off by their own anxious cares, the riches of the world, the fleeting ple pleasures of this life. This is why they never become mature and fruitful. The seed that fell into good fertile soil represents those lovers of truth who hear it deep within their hearts. They respond by clinging to the word, keeping it dear as they endure all things in faith. This is the seed that will one day bear much fruit in their lives. And Father, again, um, I, just, I just thank you, Lord, that the people that come into this church, Father, will have that kind of seed experience that'll go deep in their heart and they'll stay with it. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 9. It is true, eh? 
You get used to your own Bible. I don't use that passion one as very often. <laughs> but this one I know. This is a spirit-filled Bible that I, this is on my second one, but uh, it's a different one uh, that I started out with Bible school that I really love. Um, so 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the first fellowship we have in the body is with the Lord, right? So we're saved. We get to know Jesus and, you know, we can all think back of that, that precious time we had. I, I thought back to even like um, times growing up in youth group. I grew up at Rock Church in Shiloh and there'd be some nights we'd have like an awesome service. Everybody would be pumped. Okay, let's go out and hang out and do fun things, right? And then there were some solemn nights where everyone was just like, no, I just got to go home and get along with God again. And so that's the precious time, right, that we have. And that's the fellowship. That's originally what we're meant to have, which is really awesome. Primarily, we are teamed up with Jesus. However, through him, we have this church family, right? Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. A little instruction for us all. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord with, has Christ with Baal? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And, you know, going back to that experience, um, the sourdough, the ladies with the high school and everything, I was like, this is so cool that, you know, forming new relation, old new relationships, right? And... That's what I believe God's doing. I, I, you know, he can, he can bring revival however he wants and he will do it many different ways. But I really believe, I th growing up in church, sometimes we would just wait for people to come into the building, right? <laughs> like, oh, God's just going to bring every, you know, just like all of us young ladies thought we were going to marry a missionary, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> which you are, honey, but you know, whatever. Um, but that's the thing, right? The mission field has changed. And so it's, it's up to us, but that's not a heavy burden to bear. It's just be you, right? It's like, what did you do this weekend? Oh, this, you know, <laughs> I won't tell you of a slang that I just learned what something means that I didn't know what it meant. But anyways, so, um, but that's the thing, right? We're just, our light shines. I had to, um, I didn't have to, I got to meet uh, a colleague on the, on the client side a couple weeks ago in Moncton. And a um, little, little nervous, military background um, can be quite direct, we'll say, because this is being filmed. And um, my, when you're in, in with people one-on-one, -on -one, it's so different, right? People's barriers break down. They're not all that tough and, you know, whatever. We had great conversation. I got to know a lot about him. Like, it was, it was fantastic. And I did, you know, not let it slip, but I, you know, we're just chatting and whatever. And I was just myself and I was like, oh yeah. Oh, and he's like, what's your husband do? Oh, he's, um, he's an oil burn mechanic. Oh, and he's an ordained minister. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. And we have two dogs and uh, we're not getting chickens. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> But that's sometimes, you know, things just come out of you of who you are, right? Um, listen, I, I love my husband and uh, pretty much, I mean, he wears me down to whatever, you know, we have a hot tub. Oh, I have a hot tub. Wore me down. I get, I'm just joking. We both really, really enjoy that. But um, yeah, two dogs two, and chickens and I work from home. Bah, bah, bah. Crazy. No. <laughs> so... Um, you know, and it's good to know who we, like I said earlier, it was, it's good to know what your calling is and it's okay to have the personality you have, right? So I'm actually kind of like introverted, extroverted, like kind of on the, you know, so, you know, so I, I can do this. I'm, I'm fine chatting and same with like in real estate, whatever I can lead or whatever. Um, and I can do that for so long. And then I'm just like, okay. Okay, doggies, let's just have a, you know, let's just chill, right? So it's just, you know, but that's okay, right? So just realize that with whoever we're around, like James is the extrovert in our family, right? And they they say women can talk, right? And Ashton and I are like, no, no, <laughs> these 
boys. Spawn a golden can. Look, oh, we've been many nights out in the dark <laughs> waiting for the boys to wrap up their conversation. But that's awesome. And you know what? We are so, so thankful for the friendships we've had in, in this church and just in our lives. Like that is just absolutely priceless, you know. Justin asked for prayer today and we were agreeing with him in prayer in our chat because they've been on vacation and now they're at the shopping portion. <laughs> And I said, I can agree with you, Justin, that all the good deals come your way. <laughs> and a whole lot of them, I said. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I've got the best of bestest friends. Because Lisa, of course, said amen, amen. <laughs> so anyways, I um, wanted to uh, switch gears a little bit and uh, go into something that um, really means a lot to me. And kind of the topic is covenant. Which is funny because John said he didn't get to it. And I was like, it's okay. It's come a couple of days away. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. So Genesis 6. I get, like I said, I grew up in church. And so I saw a lot. And um, I know that pastors, uh, you know, really, you know, I was talking about eldership earlier. And, but pastors have that um, heart for people as well. And so um, if people treat church not as much of a family, but more of a come and go, you know, this week I'm going to Dairy Queen, next week I'm going to Burger King, whatever. I don't go to either of those places. I don't know where those came from. But anyways, um, you know, it, it can be painful. And so, um, but for me, yeah, covenant is, is extremely important. So let's look at this. Genesis 6, 9. Then this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was just a man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Actually, I got a really funny story. Well, funny little thing. So James was listening to preaching. I think it was today. And the, the gentleman said, the Titanic was built by experts. Noah built an ark designed by God. Let that sink in. <laughs> right? Hello. Noah walked with God and Noah begot three sons. <laughs> The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Wow, right? Yeah, see? Look around, right? So, hey, like, literally look around. It's, it, there's been some things. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms. You guys ever build with gopher wood jewelry? Oh, I haven't heard that one yet about a camp. Oh, a uh, coop. Yeah. Chicken coop. Mm, right, right. <laughs> Make room in the ark and cover it inside and outside. I deserve that. And, and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be three, 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and it's height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubic from above and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower second and third decks. Wow. A lot, of, yeah, a lot of detail, eh? Big boat. And behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breadth of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wives, and your sons' wives with you. Thank God for covenant. They were completely covered. It's an amazing story. I mean, I can't, I can't quite even imagine it, right? Like, I don't even, like, did, had it even rained, right? It, it's just, it amazes me. And, and the trust of people to just go, okay, I hear God's voice. Like, that's how much we have to know God's voice, right? Like, okay, yeah, we're going to get in a boat. Something's going to happen, but we're going to be okay. <laughs> Awesome. Amazing. So I just wrote a couple of things here. Um, God still speaks and directs us into blessings, right? So that's it. They were covered. They were going to be blessed. They didn't probably didn't quite understand it or see it yet, but they knew that voice or um, Noah knew that voice, right? Exodus 31, 16. 
Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. Now, I just, I just wanted to read that because just in case anyone was wondering if it was in there for real, because <laughs> you know, it's funny, right? Because people just think, oh, well, you know, I honor God here, there. I mean, we do here, right? But it's just something that impressed upon me. And I think sometimes too, like as as the church is growing, right? We've got to be speaking these things over ourselves and remembering that that, it, that is part of the covenant, right? Is keeping the Sabbath. And um, a covenant, expre- an expression of love, love in action, and a choice to not give up. That's really what it means to me. And uh, I'm going to go to Isaiah 42, 6. Never give up. The breakthrough is around the corner. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, and I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I just, that goes again along with what I was talking about, knowing our calling, right? Like we are all called to this. I'm going to read it again. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. It's not our righteousness, it's in his righteousness and will hold our hand. So whatever, you know, um, you get asked to do something, you can know that if, that it's from God, that he's going to help you. If you, you know, and you can check in your spirit, we're all uh, connected with the Holy Spirit to ask, okay, okay, well, I think, yep, no, that's right. I I should be doing that. He's going to help you, right? I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people. And you know, that's what, that's what church life and family church life is all about and a light to the Gentiles. Um, I also just had a couple of words to speak on that. What God was speaking to me, a covenant with God to never walk away you know, you hear people say, yeah, but, but you, you got to say that. Yeah. But God has always come through. doesn't matter. Like, you know, there, you could, I've even said about God, like, I don't understand everything, you know, and I'm, you know, if every, if anybody does like fill me in, right. But there, if everything that has happened in our life, that has been such a huge blessing, right? If, if there's something that we don't understand or you feel like is withhold, withheld or whatever, I just, that's where I'm at. Yeah, but God has always come through. So whatever, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, but. Um, same with our, uh, a covenant with God to never walk away, to always maintain this relationship no matter what. Same with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Love and love for covenant will grow a desire to be friendly, to overcome disagreements, to see others as the Lord sees them, uh, to reach out and grow his church. I, I think back to Lisa too, like, um, I don't know how long we've known her. Um, and um, I just remember, and, and this, you know, God, okay, go, Heather, go talk to her, make her feel welcome, whatever. Okay, good. You know that that, and you're not looking for that blessing. You believe that you're called to, you know, reach everybody and, and be friendly and all of that. But I'll tell you, she is now one of my closest friends, one of the biggest blessings in my life. Um, Lisa, if you don't know, she listens. Like, <laughs> that's a commodity, <laughs> in this world. Do you know what I mean? Like to have a relationship with someone that actually, you know, listens and it kind of, it actually kind of startles me sometimes because I'll be just like, la, 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 la. And she's like, oh, really? So then what? Oh, you just asked me a question about what I was talking about. Whoa. Okay. Anyways, it's, it's amazing, right? Because we all, we all can kind of, you know, get wrapped up in what we're thinking about and we're overstimulated, right? In this world of, of everything coming at us and bombarding and what we're thinking about next and what we're supposed to be doing or what we think we're supposed to be doing. Anyways, I'm just really thankful for her. Uh, a challenge to give grace to someone who has even ir- irked you. <laughs> you may be used by God to lead them to him right? And I'm thinking workplace, you know, interesting situations that we come across. They're just like, okay, they're in your life for a reason, right? Like, anyways, 
<laughs> go with it. <laughs> um, wanted to go to Hebrews 8 and 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant, Old Testament, had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out to the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are not discarding his covenant with us and uh, the steps that he's asked us to walk in. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. You know, when you stop there, it's like people sometimes are like, oh, church is so full of rules. You know what? The whole world is full of rules. Like, yeah. And to have a set of rules that benefits you, like, come on, just give it a try, right? Is what I think sometimes. People are like, church, you know, you got to, I'm like, I don't got to do nothing, obviously, but I get to, right? And it benefits my life. Like, don't even like tithing. Don't like, I've been doing that since, so like James said, one of the first principles he learned and that's only blessed me like over and over. It's amazing. Um, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying, know the Lord for all shall know me. Yes. Thank you, Father. That's happening. I, I just thank you, Lord, just that you're speaking to, I just, I just, I don't know. I'm just praying tonight through what God's been showing me and, um, that God's just going to touch people's hearts right now, wherever they are, our family members, that they're just going to have an experience with God that they just honestly were not expecting, right? But we're expecting. And so for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to the, their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more in that. He says a new covenant he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 24. This verse is awesome. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of, sp of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. I was supposed to go to the passion for all that. Wasn't I Joshua? <laughs> So blessed by uh, Joshua and Ty and Bella, Malachi, helping out in the church. Those are the, um, it's just, it's going to bless your life, buddy. It's, uh, the church is a great training ground uh, to learn a lot in your life of uh, a servanthood. And uh, it's amazing. So... Hebrews 12 and 24. And we have come to Jesus who established a new covenant with his blood sprinkled upon the mercy seat. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Blood that continues to speak from heaven, forgiveness. A better message than Abel's blood that cries from the earth, justice. And that, that is the message of the cross, right? Completely and wholly is forgiveness. And that's what we are, um, if we concentrate on that when we're reaching out to people, they'll be drawn to that forgiveness. Everybody feels bad about themselves these days. Not us, not them in the future, but that's what they're, that, that's what a lot of people deal with, you know? And um, yeah, I just, uh, there's, a, there's been a lot going on this week. A um, couple of things about covenant. Covenant is an agreement or promise. The Jewish faith is based on the biblical covenant made with Abraham, Moses, and David, an agreement which brings about a relationship of commitment between God and his people, a solemn agreement between the members of a church, 
to act together in harmony with the precepts of the gospel, right? Like, let, let's, let's uh, act a, as we speak, right? Uh, marriage covenant, one of the best examples of covenant, right? Uh, is a marriage covenant a formal agreement between two people? A forever com- commitment of love. A um, couple uh, little things I wrote down here. Um, James and his gardening. Uh, this this spoke to me so one day. James and Jordy built this beautiful garden. Gorgeous. Keyhole, high, you know, great. Uh, Favor got his ball caught in there the other day. But anyways, it's all good. Um, and one day I'm walking by it. And I'm like, you know, you're just walking around the yard. Whatever. I'm like, what is that growing there? He's like, oh, that's celery. And I'm like, What? So if you know James, he cannot stand celery. This man will eat everything. Like I'm sure he would eat bugs before he'd eat celery. <laughs> and he planted me celery. And I was like, and I like literally, I don't buy celery because you know, you even tried it a little, I mean, spit it out. <laughs> right? Put in the compost to let the nutrients from it help other things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways... Yeah, he's saving it for the chickens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the other, uh, the other thing, so funny, when we first moved into our house, and we've been there now three years, and I'm just in the kitchen doing whatever, and I go to, um, I'm like, oh, I take a knife, and I'm going towards the toaster. James flies across the kitchen. Don't do that. I'm like. I had the toaster unplugged, but he thought like I was putting the toast, because your toast, especially now sourdough, but toast gets stuck in the toaster. So I was putting the knife in there to pull it right, right? But he just grabbed hold of me and pulled me away from the toaster. I'm like, we have life insurance. You didn't even want me to put my knife in the toaster. (laughs) I'm just joking. But that's like those kinds of things, you know, in in a moment, you have heats of, you know, moments of, you know interesting things. But with that, I was like, okay, he really loves me. (laughs) Anyways, it was funny. I just close with this um, challenge for us to all believe the best of each other. Um, Believe that our intentions are good. Uh, That's living in peace. I I remember one person who spoke here one time that said, you know, um, if I came up to you and slapped you, like your thought, I mean, it's pretty far-fetched, but should be that, that you tripped. So then your hand fell, <laughs> flew, <laughs> right? Because we should think of the, the best of each other, right? And think of like where we're coming from, what our day was like. I mean, we should all be angels. I know that by now, <laughs> but you know, we're all a work in progress. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah our hail is a little crooked. <laughs> Feels like this mouth, mouth thing is crooked, but yeah, you know, but I just, uh, just challenge you with that. I think we're, I think we're doing awesome. Um, James and I, with our fellowship, we've been doing like We've got a baby shower coming up for Lisa, but we've done like some progressive dinners and just getting together because people crave fellowship, right? With like-minded, like they said, like don't be unequally yoked, right? And, you know, we, we yeah, with unbelievers and, and, and just, you know, uh, it, it's just so encouraging to be able to get together. And I now have the motto of like work hard, play hard. Because like with my personality, I could work all day and be like, I'm tired. I just need to just, nope, let's go out. Let's go do something. Let's fellowship. Let's include somebody. I had a birthday brunch a couple weeks ago. I organized, I was like, let's go out for brunch. And uh, the, and I was t- talking about one other place and they're like, okay, Heather, organize that. Let's go out again. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> right? So it's just, uh, you know, find your people and get connected and uh, encourage each other and, and be there for one another. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.